Welcome back to another episode of Backlog Journal, the show where I talk about games I've been playing. In this episode, I'll be talking about a handful of games that I've been dabbling in over the last couple months. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First up here, we have One Piece Pirate Warriors 2 for the PS3. I've been a big fan of these games ever since I downloaded the first one back in the day when I first got into the One Piece anime. At the time, I had only seen up to the part where Chopper joins the crew, so I actually stopped playing after I reached that point in the game in order to avoid spoilers. But now that I'm completely caught up on the series, I've really been enjoying playing through these games. At this point, I've played through Pirate Warriors 3 and Pirate Warriors 4, so I decided to track down these European copies of the first two entries since here in America, these games were only ever available digitally. I was always really interested in Pirate Warriors 2 specifically because unlike the other games in the series that attempt to follow the plot of the manga, and I say attempt because they actually skip over a lot of stuff. This entry's campaign features a completely unique and obviously non-canon original story. I personally love when games based on anime do stuff like this. While it is fun to play through iconic story moments, that kind of stuff usually gets done to death. Pirate Warriors 2 flips the script and basically becomes a One Piece game where each chapter is a what-if scenario. Considering that this game came out 11 years ago, it's really cool to see stuff like Luffy teaming up with certain obscure characters characters that might have seemed outrageous back then, but nowadays actually make sense or has straight up actually happened in the manga. I won't geek out about this too much because I know that not everyone out there is a fan of this series, but if you are, definitely check out the One Piece Pirate Warriors games, specifically 3 and 4, because those go on sale for dirt cheap on modern platforms all the time. The chaotic Musou gameplay lends itself perfectly to these over-the-top shonen anime characters. I also just find this genre very cathartic, especially after a long day of work. It's the type of game where you can just turn your brain off and feel like an overpowered monster as you take out wave after wave of enemies. If you think that this style of game looks fun, but you aren't a One Piece fan, then I recommend checking out some of the other properties that have been adapted into Musou games like Zelda, Fire Emblem, Persona, or even the original Dynasty Warriors series that started it all. I'm really hoping they make a new entry in the Pirate Warriors series soon because the most recent one, I feel really perfected the gameplay, but it was severely lacking in terms of content. I thought they would have milked it for DLC, but all they ever added to the game was new characters, which is still cool, but having to play the same seven or so areas over and over again got old really fast. Anyways, let's move on to the next game. <laughs> Dragon Age Origins for the Xbox 360 is a game that I spent a decent amount of time playing throughout August. I actually gave this game its own video, giving my kind of first impressions of it, so check that out if you want to hear my full thoughts. I enjoyed the time that I spent with this one, but I ended up not finishing it. I mostly just wanted to get a taste of where the series started before attempting to play the newer titles. There are a lot of things I enjoyed about Origins. I thought the world and lore was very interesting, and I found myself surprisingly invested in the game's story. I really enjoyed the combat as well. I think the main thing that started making me feel burnt out on this one was the game's just overall clunkiness, which is mostly just due to its age. Stuff like frequent and long loading screens, combined with overall pretty poor performance, starts to get a little old after a while. I also found myself never really adjusting well to the game's numerous clunky menus, despite the amount of hours I had put in. So with that being said, I'd love to revisit this game sometime if it ever received a remake that fixed some of these issues, but for now, I'm going to shelf this one and maybe check out some of the later entries. Alright, next up we have Sonic Lost World on the Wii U. This is a game that I had been interested in trying ever since it came out back in 2013. Due to middling reviews at the time, I never picked it up, which was honestly the right move because I think I would have been pretty disappointed if I paid the full 50 bucks for this one. Thankfully, I found this copy here at a local game store recently for around $17, so I figured I couldn't go wrong. I went into this game with pretty low expectations if I'm being honest, and for the first chunk of it, 
I was actually having a pretty good time. I really liked the overall aesthetic of this game. It's like they took 16-bit Sonic and wrapped it around a cylinder for some reason. Yeah, this is that Sonic game that everyone was comparing to Mario Galaxy when it first came out due to its weird cylindrical level design, which I actually kind of enjoyed at first. But then it does this thing that every modern 3D Sonic game does for some reason, where half the game is a slow 2D platformer. In my opinion, this is one of the least enjoyable aspects of modern 3D Sonic games, because these 2D sections always bring any sense of speed or momentum you had to a halt. Despite this, I was trying to give this game a fair chance. Like I said, I was enjoying the actual 3D stages a decent amount, but once I got about halfway through the game, I found myself getting more and more frustrated with the game's increasingly annoying level design, doing everything it possibly can to slow you down in a game that should be about speed. So with my morbid curiosity for this game satisfied, I decided to shelve this one as well and not waste any more time on it. You grabbed my friend and I want him back! Man, this day keeps getting lamer and lamer. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? While Sonic Lost World was a rather not-so-great game from 2013, Mario & Luigi Dream Team has been nothing but a pleasant experience that was also released that very same year. I am a huge, huge fan of the first three entries in the Mario & Luigi RPG series by Alpha Dream, so I naturally bought this fourth entry day one back in 2013, but something about it just didn't hook me back then. I played through the first couple of areas and then just never touched it again for no real reason at all. However, with the recently announced Mario & Luigi Brothership on the horizon, I decided to finally give this game a second chance with the hopes of finishing it before the next entry in the series drops this November. At the time of writing this, I'm just over 15 hours in and I'm having a really good time. This has been my handheld RPG that I've been chipping away at every night before bed, which is pretty fitting for a game about a sleepy Luigi. I've been keeping it ready to go on my nightstand for short play sessions and I even brought it with me on our little weekend trip to Michigan. This was such a nice little getaway. We only stayed for one night, but it was pretty much the first time that Nadia and I had a chance to get out of my hometown since we arrived here six months ago, and I think we both appreciated the change of scenery. We got this really cute little Airbnb to stay in that was unfortunately a bit nasty on the inside, so we actually ended up getting a refund and stayed in a slightly less nasty hotel down the road. Is there anyone sleeping in the bed? Hmm, this bed looks like someone might have just been sleeping in it. There's still like someone's head indent on the pillow. But other than that, we really enjoyed our time spent hitting up some wineries and hanging out by the lake, even though it was a bit too cold to swim. And I'm sorry for tricking you into watching a mini travel vlog, but I like to use Backlog Journal as a bit of a life journal as well, so don't be surprised if I occasionally sneak some more stuff like this into future episodes. And you know what? That dirty house in the woods kind of reminded me of the latest game that I've been playing. Resident Evil 7 has been one of those legendary experiences with a game where once I started it, I just could not put it down. First off, I have to say this is definitely the scariest Resident Evil game that I've played so far. There were moments, especially early on, where I was so stressed out from being chased by Jack that I had to take breaks and just catch my breath a little bit. And that might sound dramatic, but compared to the first six Resident Evil games, Seven feels different in a lot of ways. I think a large part of that is the game's switch to a first-person perspective, combined with just how well they nailed the setting and atmosphere in this one. It's a huge contrast to Resident Evil 5 and 6, which both really leaned into the action and focused less on the creepy atmosphere. The enemies just look and feel so much more threatening than what we've seen in past entries in Resident Evil 7. Plus, you've got this whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre-inspired family chasing you around their rotten house the whole time, and it's just non-stop tension. I finished the main campaign within a week of starting the game, so then I moved on to the Chris Redfield DLC, which adds to the story and took me an additional two hours to finish, and I thought it was a lot of fun as well. I want to get through the rest of the DLC, and then I'll probably move on to Resident Evil 8, and if you're buying games physically still like I am, make sure you get the 
gold editions for these two. That way you have all the DLC on disc and don't have to buy it separately. And with that, this episode of Backlog Journal comes to a close. Be sure to let me know what games you've been playing down in the comments. And be sure to follow me on social media if you want me to be a part of your daily doom scrolling. Links in the description for all of that stuff. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.